right folks, when Fujifilm announced the GFX 50S in 2016 at Photokina, they really shook up the medium format market and changed it forever. What we're seeing now has been completely shaped by the release of this line of cameras. I was fortunate to be in the press conference in 2016 to get hands on with this the very same day. And I've had the good fortune to shoot with all of the GFX cameras extensively on my travels around the world. In this video, I wanna run you through all of the different models in the system, give you my thoughts on them, explain the pluses and minuses of each one, and help you decide what might be best for your style of shooting. All of these are readily available either new or on the used market. I've been on and checked and all of the big players have all of the models available in really great condition and for the most part at great prices. So we're gonna run through them, break them down piece by piece and see what's going to work best for your needs. If you're in the GFX system or you're considering getting one, go ahead and check out my brand new Fujifilm GFX setup guide. It takes you through every camera in the system. It's it's a living document that as new cameras are released will be added to it free of charge, takes you through all of the physical controls on the camera, a complete initial setup guide on what you want to customize right from the outset, and a complete menu deep dive that takes you through every single menu in these highly customizable cameras. So first of all, let's look at the two original cameras. So first off we had the GFX 50S come out. Interesting styling, it does have a bit of a big caboose on it, but comparing it to what was on the market at the time, you were looking at modular cameras, and then we had the Pentax 645Z. This is using the same 50 megapixel sensor. In fact, all of the 50s in this range are using the, the same 50 megapixel sensor. But you can see there's a significant difference in size and styling of these two guys in terms of their overall layout. The R is intended to look like a rangefinder camera, that's what the R stands for, even though it is using a traditional mirrorless, traditional mirrorless, uh, a mirrorless style EVF system, it's in the form factor of a rangefinder style camera. So let's compare these two first. Now rather than talking about what's the same on these cameras, because they're really quite similar in terms of what's inside, I'll focus in on what's the difference between them. One thing though I would point out, both of them, and indeed all of the GFX cameras, have a screen that will let you tilt up 90 degrees, so if you want to use the cameras in a waist viewfinder style, looking down at your image, you can do that. In terms of what the S has to offer over the R, it has a headphone port, both or all of the 50 megapixel cameras give you options of 1080 video, uh, no 4K in these ones. Um, so having the headphone port is definitely a plus. It also has a higher magnification EVF at 0.85 compared to the 0.77 that you get on the GFX 50R. And one big differentiator other than the styling the S has the additional sub display on the top of the camera that shows your key shooting details. And like everything on these cameras, it's highly customizable. What you wanna put into that display, you can change it all around so that it has the kind of shooting information that's suitable for your style of shooting. Now, advantages of the R, there's a few. I would say, one of the main reasons people are considering this camera is the styling, and it has really unique styling. It's like a big X-Pro3 in terms of its form factor. Ergonomics are a little bit challenging. You might want to get an external grip to pair with this one, especially if you're using the larger lenses. But in terms of advantages of this guy, it includes Bluetooth for syncing to your phone, getting the location data, that kind of thing, and transferring images. The S didn't have Bluetooth included. It's slimmer and it's lighter, and at launch, it was a fair bit cheaper than the S. But, as we're going to see as a common theme going through here, the cult status of the 50R now means that if you're looking to pick up a good quality used one, they're actually selling for more than the 50S. And taking a look at the Fujifilm's own refurbished store in USA, 
they're also selling it for a premium. It's only $1,000 cheaper than the latest camera to be released in the system, the GFX 100S. Jumping ahead four years, we got the new camera, which is the 50S Mark II. Now, this is actually the 100S, but they're identical outside. It's just the sensor difference between them. Now, this guy on paper, actually, there's not a huge difference in terms of specifications. This does also have uh, Bluetooth included. It's got the headphone port as well, but all of the cameras have a port that you can plug in a external remote for triggering the camera. And the big difference though is ergonomics. You'll note the original had a detachable EVF. The new guy does not have that. It's a fixed EVF. Uh, but overall, the ergonomics are much better. It's much, much slimmer, and it's using the new battery, so you're going to get significantly better battery life out of it. You'll note, though, that the top sub-display is quite different. The new one has a lot more shooting information there than the original generation. Which one of these would you choose with the newer ergonomics and the newer styling? I would probably go for the 50S Mark II. The old one's just a bit too chunky and with the single old battery doesn't have as good battery life, but used, if you're just looking at price, the original 50S is fantastic value. If you want styling, then the 50R is either going to be your first pick or you're not interested in it at all. That's a very personal thing. But I have to say the pricing on the new guy is pretty fantastic and actually you can get these new at the moment at B&H Photo for $3,200 whereas the refurbished 50R, which is several years older, is selling for $3,700. So, you know, you have to factor in your budget. Next up, stepping up to the 100 megapixel cameras. So, the flagship GFX 100 came out two years after the original one and I have to say it sent ripples through the industry as much or maybe even more than the original camera did. There were other 100 megapixel cameras on the market, but you're talking about things like Phase One and Hasselblad with the larger medium format sensor. And those uh, you're looking at, you know, $30,000, $40,000 plus for the system. This came in at $10,000 and really rare for a medium format camera. It's got in-body image stabilization as well as 4K video. Now I know a lot of people aren't interested in video on a medium format camera, but there are people who wanna have an all-in-one system so they don't need to be taking a video camera and a stills camera, or they're just gonna grab the occasional uh, video clip. So having it incorporated in the highest quality is a big plus. It also, you can see it's a significantly bigger camera than the successor, the GFX 100S or any of the previous ones. It has a permanently attached integrated grip. You can't take that grip off. It's also got a second sub display that shows you more shooting information. So the second sub display, the main display and the top display are all customizable and you can have virtually every different variable that you could be considering when you're shooting there for you to see straight away. One thing to note, the new price on this camera hasn't dropped at all. It's still listed at 10,000 US dollars plus tax. A couple of years after that, we got the GFX 100S. It's sharing, as I said, all of the same body and styling as the 50S Mark II, but it's sharing the sensor, stabilization, and other features of the GFX 100 in the smaller form factor. It's also using the new battery type, which gives you significantly more shooting. So whilst the GFX 100 has dual batteries in the grip, it uses two of the smaller, older batteries, smaller in terms of capacity, they're still huge. So you're not gonna get double the battery life out of the original just because it has two battery slots. In terms of specifications, the biggest defining factor between these two, other than the ergonomics and the integrated grip, is the EVF is significantly higher resolution on this, and it's that much less portable. I personally think that ergonomics-wise, I would go for this one, forgetting any other issues. But when it comes to price, we see the same thing coming again. New, this is $6,000 and this is $10,000, both still available for sale. I'll put links to all of the deals and stuff I'm mentioning below. But on the used market, 
actually this guy is selling for more than the flagship. Quite surprising actually, considering they're the same sensor and a lot of the used cameras have a similar amount of wear and tear on them. Checking out MBP, I saw that the GFX100 is ranging from 3400 to 4500, so less than half the original price, whereas the S is trading at a much tighter band and closer to its retail of around 4300 to $4,600. Taking a look at the whole range again, I should point out that every camera in the range has dual SD cards, uses the unfortunately crappy form of HDMI, the micro HDMI, but all of them are giving you amazing image quality. It's true that the 50 megapixel sensor in all of these models is really getting quite old. It does date back to the Pentax 645, but it still produces just luscious tones. So that's the main spec differentiators between them. I think it's really going to come down to what's your budget and do you want 50 or 100 megapixel? If I were looking at 100 megapixel, no doubt I would go for the 100S over the, the original, the GFX 100 much more shoots my personal style of shooting. And in terms of 50 megapixel, seeing I have mirrorless cameras in that ballpark of resolution and beyond now, I probably wouldn't be buying one for that aspect anymore. So I would probably go for the 50R because I just love the look of it. Having said that, if I had to choose one out of the whole range, I would go for the GFX 100S. Let me know if you have any questions. What would be your pick and what is it that you're actually shooting? Check out my new Fuji guide below and I'll see you guys soon.